So this ad, I've done this advert for republic.org.uk petitioning HM government. So it's an adver- it is an advertisement for a petition for republic.org.uk, right? And it's an audio one. It can be audio because there might be blind people, right? And I did it a cover a cover version of Hey Joe, but I changed the words a little bit. But it's it's essentially pretty much the same, right? And it's like the other um, ones that we've done that are like King Charles impression, right? Which have, they're all published, no problem, except um, this one. It got put through, and then it went live on YouTube, and it hadn't it hadn't gone live on um, Amazon or anything. And I checked it yesterday, and it was it was actually playing on YouTube. Here it is. Look, this is my viewing history, right? This is my viewing history, right? And here is the actual picture for it. It says 2 minutes 24 there. And I called it the Joe Biden experience versus Marianne 2024, petitioning King Charles III. So it, it is an advertisement uh, making a point for on behalf of to, for Republic campaign, which you can do a petition. You can support or oppose any campaign, but you can obstruct campaigns. That's the law, right? And um, so it, it, I listened to it yesterday. I actually listened to it yesterday. It was on. So I was just waiting for it to go on Amazon. And then it's just been taken down now. Um, I've just gone on to the TuneCore website that you publish it through. And it says taken down, right? It's three letters. JBE, Joe Biden experience. So when you click on it, this video is not available, but usually when videos are removed and the video is not available, usually when the video is removed and the video is not available, there's Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe Campbell there, Dr. John Campbell there. When it's removed and not available, it doesn't even show you any information at all. It usually just goes completely blank. And here... It's still actually got... I can still give it thumbs up. I can still actually give it thumbs up. And I can still actually give it thumbs down or thumbs up. And I can still... I can still do the playlist functions. Look, I've put it in the rights playlist there, right? Put it in the playlist. And the title is still there. The, t- the, the, the title's there. The Joe Biden Experience versus Marianne 2024 petitioning King Charles III. So it's actually supporting Marianne 2024, actually, but it's also supporting um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., but it's also petitioning King Charles III. I've done, like, a medley creative combination of political points basically uh, and it, it is a petition advert for republic which is a registered democratic organization which you can support and the so the, the other thing is this that so the political point made in the video which i've got the entitlement to make whatever political point i want is creatively is that so it's just a cover of Hey Joe. Now, they can't say you can't publish Hey Joe because there are hundreds of covers of Hey Joe out there. It's a song that exists by Jimi Hendrix. It is a published song and people cover it. So you can't say you can't cover it. You, you can't say you can't cover the song because everyone's covered it. You know, um, that's discrimination. If Now, if, if that song can't be sung or can't be published or can't be written, then um, no, no one else will be able to do it. When someone else is doing the exact same thing, then not. Now, if they don't like the cover or if they don't like the title, then they should say, you know, we don't like the cover or the title. I use Marianne Williamson on it just because I like the picture she got with her arms out um, and... It's got like the stars and well, not the, the stripes from the American flag in the background. And I kind of like the idea of the fact that she's running for president, right? And uh, but she's she's running for Democrats and Joe Biden's Democrats. 
and you know it's Biden, like Biden, two, like you know it's Biden too. So like the, the, the two separate people who are opposed to each other running for the same party. So like the whole idea why they even like Biden anyway, you know, it is you know the fact that the government have got this issue where people within their own companies or people within their own groups or parties. Uh, may not be in line, like Jeremy Corbyn with Keir Starmer. You know, they want everyone to do what they say or you know, they don't want any opposition and they don't want any fair, fair opposition either, right? Now, the thing is, right, that the, the, the lyrics are, are hardly really change much. I mean, I might, I might get a... I might redo the song in the exact same lyrics as Hey Joe so it's not changed. And then they can't deny it because it's already published. They can't say one person can do a cover when one person can't when they've let hundreds of people do it. I, do, I can't see why they can't say Tim Wells, I let Tim Wells do it. Even if I just put the title Hey Joe um, petitioning King, ja King Charles III, that's the most stripped down title you can get. And I've already got the other titles petitioning King Charles III, right? So it, it, it's very difficult for them to justify denying it. If they don't like the title, but it's just the Joe Biden experience. Like, it's like the Joe Rogan experience, the Joe Biden experience. When it's for political purpose and political activity, you can put names like I've got King Charles, right? Um, I put the Joe Biden experience versus Mary in 2024. Now, the thing is, hey, Joe, the song, though, it's the, the lyrics go, hey, Joe, where are you going with that gun in your hand? But that, that's the song. And it's been in the charts and it's played on the radio all the time. So how can there be a problem with the song? Now, the problem is, right, that Rob F. Kennedy Jr., who I actually support, as well as I support Marion Williamson, they won't give Rob F. K. Jr. Um, the government protection. They're, they're denying him, like, the security protection that all presidential candidates get it. Um, that no one's ever been denied it, but he's been denied it. Yet his um, ancestors, his family in the past were the ones who got shot like RFK, right? Now, that's the irony in the JBE, like RFK, um, Robert F. Kennedy, you know, JBE, it's like three letters, right? Now, the thing is that why won't Biden give um, Robert F. Kennedy protection, security protection? Robert F. Kennedy is having to pay for his own security protection out of his own funds. The government aren't giving it, so he's having a lot less funds for his campaign. So it's affecting his campaign, right? Now, the problem is that that leaves Robert F. Kennedy at threat. He, he, he's essentially being, he, he's at risk and the government won't give him protection, not not state funded. So if he's got to pay for it himself and it's not as good protection and it's going to make his campaign um, fail because he's not got as much money going into his campaign. He's got to spend it all on his own um, security, right? So the thing is that Mary Ann Williamson will be getting protection, right? But she is opposed to Biden. So the whole thing, you know, Mary Ann Williamson's getting protection, RFK isn't. Um, he's having to pay extra for it. He's affecting his fund. Joe Biden is a Democrat and Marianne Williamson is running for Democrats. So it's like the whole Biden conundrum. Now, the thing is, the song's about, you know, Jim Hendrix wrote the song and, and hundreds of people have covered it. So you can't be not allowed the song, right? So, you know, and it's Hey Joe. It's called Hey Joe when you say Joe. And never once in the song does it say, he never refers to Biden or anyone, just says, hey, Joe, you know? And I've done loads of other um, parodies before, uh, uh, King Charles parodies of other covers, like of other cover songs, without without really any problem. I, I had what problem with one. Um, we actually was up for a while. Um, and really, that should still be up. But I don't, I'm not having a problem on Bandcamp with them. It's only on the major platforms. In fact, really, mainly, it was it, it was Apple where the problems were. There haven't actually been any problems on YouTube. And the other, the other, I've done another team. I've done another Robert F. Kennedy team Kennedy um, release, uh, and that's still up there. Another one for um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. team, which is Free Speech, the Real American, right? So, 
The thing is, if so, if Biden is so bothered about security risks, this is the point, right? The main point really in it is if there are security risks, right, then firstly, why aren't Biden giving RFK security risks? And if Joe Biden doesn't like the song, um, and if he thinks the song's a security risk, hey, Joe, where are you going with that gun in your hand? Then why why isn't he pulled down every, um, every Hey Joe cover? Why doesn't he pull down every Jimi Hendrix um, Hey Joe, every single Jimi Hendrix Hey Joe, and every cover version of it? Why don't he pull them all down? Because that's where we're getting to now, right? That's where we're getting to. If Biden doesn't like the song, well, why, you know, you know, if he thinks if the song's some sort of um, risk, then isn't Jimi Hendrix a risk? Isn't the, are all Hey Joe covers a risk? And namely, if, if Biden thinks it's a risk, then why isn't he providing RFK with security protection? Why is he refusing him it? Why is he giving Marianne Williamson it? And, and why has he got it himself? So he's just, Joe Biden is just a, 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 um, a, 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 a complete total hypocrite, a contradiction and a very undemocratic person. You know, YouTube also, and this is the other thing, right? I've also got a track that I've done, which is not Joe Biden. Um, it's not King Charles. It's actually one, another one for Team Kennedy, like the other one that is published, like the free speech one. And it's like, I've got an Australian woman um, doing a, it's just basically like a mix, a DJ mix and mashup from some random legislation that I got, right? But the legislation is literally proving that the rights for these political videos apply for petition, the protected and the apply on YouTube and the apply on the platforms and even evidence that there is a published direction from Parliament to publish them on private platforms. There's an enactment which says they can be published. There are advertisements. They are advertising on digital devices to people also who um, are blind and can't see, like, you know, can only listen to audio adverts. Um, and so it, they're wrong. They, they are wrong and we're being obstructed. And it's actually still got the title of the video there, unbelievably, which is kind of odd for YouTube. And the you can kind of see the picture, but it's greyed out. So the, it's meant to be controversial, but then again, Americans want guns and they want to keep gun laws and they want to have guns. So for an English, to, to do it, you know, petitioning King Charles and for English, when we don't really have guns, we don't have any or many guns at all anyway, and there are arguments over whether they should have them in America, which I don't really have an opinion on it. Um, I'm just basically framing some controversy. It's there to frame controversy. It's there to satire and comically frame all the contradictions and controversy, right? Biden, right, so basically, you know, if YouTube are taking a song down, you know, if Biden said, I told YouTube to take the song down or whatever, or even if Marianne Williamson doesn't like it yet, I've done it to promote her camp to like for her campaign. Um, why, why, aren't they, why aren't they all calling for Robert F. Kennedy to have proper government um, protection? And, you know, and if Biden doesn't like the song, why don't you take down all the Jimi Hendrix songs? Why doesn't you take down all the covers of Jimi Hendrix? At the moment, it's discrimination. Under British law, this would be discrimination because it's against trading standards and consumer rights. Someone's being allowed and provided a service for something when someone else is denied. And the fact is that for legal proceedings, a petition to government is a legal case and it serves a function because you're getting votes, you're not selling something, it serves a democratic function, and it uses the enactment, right? So, and this is the point in the other track that I'm putting out, and they've not. They've also blocked that track and disallowed it, when that track has got nothing, um, it's got nothing what you could say was, like, really controversial when it comes to, like, you know, gun law or... Um, shooting or anything like that, no satire or anything like that. It, it's in fact purely um, legislative. It's purely legislative. And if you're using a DJ mix and mix it up, then you know, 
Uh, and the fact is, really, that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. track is the legal case to YouTube. It actually serves as making the legal point of the legal case to YouTube. It serves the point of making the legal case to the government, to not only the British government, but also to Congress and to YouTube. So they're actually, and if people see it, they'll see the legal points of the legal case, but I could make a hundred videos which say that law, but are people going to hear it and see it? The fact that if I publish it, less people are publishing things in music than they are in video. And when you get searchable titles, which are easily seen, then people are going to hear it and see it, which is what YouTube are trying to stop people from doing. So they just don't want to lose. And the other thing is this. You are allowed, when you're doing an actual real legal case, right, there's nothing that says you can't actually submit it in the form of a song, um, you know, like sing your statement or sing your representation, you know. Um, you're delivering the statement, you're delivering the representation, there's nothing that stops you from singing it or doing a beat to it, right? And I've got a complaint open with the Judicial Conduct of Investigations and I've submitted to them evidence and when you open a case with the Judicial Conduct Investigations Office, it is a case, a legal case. And there are videos and evidence attached to that legal case to the Judicial Office Investigations, right? And currently, I've submitted at least two or three videos to them as statements in that case, which I don't have spare copies of. And those videos are on YouTube. I put the links, I, I send the links because, you know, 10 megabyte, 10 gigabyte videos, you know, or, or if I speak for an hour, it can be like two, three, four gigabytes and I'm running out of space on my ad drive, on my Gmail, G drives and stuff like that. They're, they're on the YouTube channel for access as well. So I've submitted videos to the Judicial Office Investigations, which currently aren't viewable. Now, that office could make a request to YouTube to give them over the videos under legal authority of parliament for legal cases. Um, but it's not just that. I need to access the videos. I can't log in to that other channel and access the videos when I need to access them, when I need information and data on them, right? So they're obstructing... The person who's bringing the legal case, right, you can always represent yourself in court all the time. You don't have to have a lawyer. You're acting as your lawyer. And what YouTube don't seem to be able to handle or get is the point that you are, any videos that you have or any evidence that you have is for legal purposes of a case. And you can host it or make it available by any means possible, particularly, um, you know, so, and when, but when it's a petition, when it's a petition to the government and people have to sign it and when they have to see the adverts for it, that petition is a legal case to the Palace of Westminster. It is legal proceedings. You can read Professor Karen Bowie's paper, you can read all the archive histories with the justices, with the grand jury, with the Lord of the Articles, with all... It is a legal case. It's not pussyfooting around. Now, no matter how Parliament undermine it and make it seem like it's petty and restrict the number of characters you can have there and, you know, your links and stuff like that, they're not restricting the links and the adverts for the petitions... Um, in other means, and they're actually, they're giving a direction to promote and share their petition on public platforms. Now, it is a legal case, and you can have adverts for a legal case, like for asking for witnesses, um, if something's been stolen or taken, uh, if they're asking if people have seen it, like show part of the evidence, like if something's been stolen. So, we're being, they're obstructing democratic function. And it says to publish means by any means possible. And it says that in the law. 
and YouTube is by one of those means, and it's done through digital and illuminated devices, even a hard drive, even Google's servers, even the the hard drive, the servers that hold all our data at Google, th that's a device, and it's the adverts on it, and it's published, and, and it's 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 stamped and recorded onto that device, um, in whatever form and by whatever means, right? And if if Google, YouTube do not release our channels, then they, they no they they're breaking the law. On the Jimmy Dar show, they're just talking about this now. This Jackson Hinkle has just had his channel taken down on some Ukrainian thing. And I think they know about this, because um, he mentioned this three-letter thing, like JBE. I think they know about the releases that I'm doing, to be honest. I've wrote into Jimmy Dar quite a few times, and Robert F. Kennedy and Marianne Williamson. Remember where Marianne Williamson doesn't like this particular track here, but... The thing is, it says in 501c3 law, in American law, that you can support any campaign or you can oppose any campaign through adverts, but you can um, you can sabotage or break the processes by which people engage. You can obstruct access for other people, but that's exactly what YouTube are doing. YouTube, they're allowed to oppose campaigns by putting their own material which rubbishes your campaign and promotes theirs. But what they're actually doing is they're denying the access to the platform and the use of it, which is denying publishing. It's denying the publication of it. So they're not just opposing it. To oppose it would be to to um, have their own material, which was pro their cause and opposite your cause. They've gone into sabotaging and denying access to function. Now, what that equates to with private businesses and why the First Amendment freedom of press, freedom of access to press, and why in England, through all these um, town and country planning acts and these other acts, it's made... He, he, he uses the His Majesty's Company's house, registered companies. The government compels them to allow us publication for function, for function of processes and procedures, right? Function of legal processes and political processes and procedures is, is imposed on all companies, house companies that are certificated and registered to be able to exist. And if... Same with printing. If there's, if in the 1700s, if you've got a village in America in the 1700s when the First Amendment's written, and it's some hillbilly county in some hillbilly town, right? And there's only one printer there. There's only one guy who's got a printer. Right, and there's different people running for the government in a hillbilly town. He's not allowed to deny printing services for printing leaflets in a local area to either party. That means that he cannot obstruct them from doing their campaign. He has to provide the services. It's discrimination anyway. He can print his own pamphlets if he supports, say, for example, one of the candidates, he's allowed to support them and say, this candidate's great. And he can also support the opposite side, uh, you know, and say, this candidate's rubbish. But by denying the service, how, how are those people going to print and do their pamphlets? They can't. Same with selling pencils and paper. And this works out for the police as well. If the police refuse to, I mean, if all of the shops in England refuse to sell the police computers, refuse to sell the army computers, refuse to sell the army ink or paper, that is obstructing a function of government, right? And that is how it works. And it would be a lot more easy to understand in the 1700s, 1800s when those laws were made. But now it's almost like you would have thought 
there's a diversity of shops, so you could just find one who supported your campaign and it wouldn't matter as much. Well, it mattered in hillbilly towns in America in the 1700s and 1800s when there were less printers. It mattered then, because they could really obstruct people. But in a way, by only having YouTube or Facebook or Insta as the main sites and hardly any other websites exist for major publishing and they're trying to take them all over, in a way... It's like being in a hillbilly town with only one printer because you've only got one major platform. So having YouTube, having YouTube, right? Only YouTube who put videos up mainly is like being in a hillbilly town back in the 1800s in Nashville, in some remote town where they're having different candidates and it's like going back in town and only having one printer who won't print someone's leaflets for a certain party, but only the other one. So YouTube are effectively going backwards. They're like, they've gone, they've gone, um... They're not modern, they're not new. They're actually receding back in time. Um, in fact, before we had rights, which is why they were invented. And that's what they can't get their head around. And I'm having to even put these complaints into the Judicial Investigations Office now um, because the Advertising Standards Agency are supposed to represent us in the governance of advertisements. That means what you can do and what you can't do. And, when, and there's also things that must be done. There are things that have to be done. There are things that are legally compelled to be done, right? Even if the government themselves don't support it or like it, it's, it has to be done because you're allowed to. You're allowed to do it and you have to do it, put these adverts out. They can't deny them. And when you're making your case, the material and content in them is, it's like in a legal case, statements and so forth. You know, it's your evidence to prove a point, to make a point in whatever form and by whatever means. It clearly states in whatever form and by in whatever means. So... How you make a point or explain or describe something artistically, you know, like in this here, is, you know, explaining, basically making a point that, you know, RFK is not getting um, security from Biden, he's denying him it, and he's affecting his money, um, yet, you know, he's supporting other candidates with security, and further to that... Um, it's making a point, you know, how come Jimi Hendrix can write a song um, but someone else can't cover the same song when it's near identical and even using political rights? So, you know, the, the YouTube and, you know, at least I can't, I, you know, the thing with TuneCore is at least they sent it and put it through. So it's not really TuneCore's fault. It is, you know, Amazon... YouTube, and in fact, to be honest, with the music side of it, YouTube have been actually all right, except with my channel. But the other thing with YouTube is they're claiming they've got all these um, sex policies and so forth. They're claiming they've got all the sex policies. Yet, um, they've got, like, if you type the words flexi sex in, they've got all these music albums released um, with sexual content. And they won't remove them. Yet they say they've got a, a policy of no sex, you know? So they're not actually applying their policy evenly across the platform at all. In fact, they're just making it up. And this is why they don't want to answer any questions. They don't want to give any replies. And this is why the corporate, the corporate are now, it, it is an authoritarian fascist regime because they're just dictating things and not having to give any answers. Tony Blair made the government totally transparent, freedom of information, and he made it sound like that we were all going to be free and open. And we can get any, any information we want from the government. And I think all those companies obtained loads of information on our government and infiltrated it. And now 
What we're seeing is the complete opposite of freedom of information. There is no... They're not given any freedom of information from these companies. But if you think of the fact that all of the companies in England really are partly are the government, they're all under government law and under government legislation, right? And also, they can't exist without a certificate. They can't form a company without complying with Companies House. And really, they are all Companies Houses companies. So they're all, all of the headquarters and offices of the government are really His Majesty's Companies House companies, right? And that's why rights apply through them. And really, if they all, if, if, if a company has a certificate on its wall and it says certificate of incorporation of a private limited company, His Majesty's government, then if you submit a freedom of information to that company, then surely that company's certification of incorporation is under His Majesty's government. So a lot of people did send freedom of information to companies, to private companies, as well as the government, and a lot of them used to get answers, like if it's a small company and they're not that bothered about asking how many widgets they sold. But then they suddenly started getting bottled by BlackRock Vanguard and then they stopped giving information over. And now they won't tell you anything, even if they've got a policy, right? And But the thing with YouTube is this. When it comes to copywriting, they only act as a third party and apparently they're not liable. And they've opened a special court, the ccb.gov, a small claim court, where that court can handle all the legal complaints and copyright arguments, if there are any. So really, the whole copyright issue on YouTube has kind of like been su supposedly sorted out. So all you're left with is the community issues. But out of all of the community issues on there, um, they're not wanting to give any data or information over. And in the civil procedure rules, it states that all parties have to make to have shown that they've made an effort to resolve the problem out of court and that they've communicated um, adequately about it and so forth to save court time. And YouTube aren't doing that. All they say is we took your thing down, it violated this policy and we don't want to say anything else, right? That's actually not attempting to resolve the matter out of court by the civil procedure rules. What it's doing is only notifying you that it's got an issue and vaguely what the issue is. So, and it's actually not attempting to resolve the matter out of court. It's letting you submit an appeal and then it automatically rejects that appeal. I've had appeals rejected. Well, I've never had any passed on the website. I go onto YouTube from Team YouTube and then they give, they actually, they've actually, on one of the issues, which was apparently COVID misinformation, the video never had any COVID misinformation or speak in it. He didn't even talk about COVID. And I actually got a message from Team YouTube saying in writing that, um, oh, it was our mistake that they agreed with me. There was no error in the video. There was nothing wrong with it. And they were going to put it back up. And then... They said, oh, we're not putting your video back up because of the other channel that you've got that's been taken down and circumvention, right? And that channel is meant to be protected under political rights. So they, you know, a lot of the time they're wrong anyway because they admitted they were wrong, yet they rejected the appeal multiple times. So they're... they're these these platforms now are it's despicable it, it, it everything that the whole country stands for and the whole world you know the whole civilization civilized civilized people democracy they're just but but they're adverts they put out oh we're happy we're friendly he's near mohan you know have an audience there clapping applauding he's a new product everyone loves it happy happy but the truth is when they have got a disagreement with you or want to take something down, they don't want to talk to you. And that is not really very nice socially. It's, it's not only anti-social, it's anti-democratic. You know, if this was how people were behaving, it would be people walking about and behaving with people they like and they want to be with and being really, really nice to them. And as soon as... 
anyone, you know, this is what Zuckerberg says. Oh, you know, don't speak to anyone you don't like or whatever. But that's just like really, you know, but they want everyone to kind of worship and applause. They want people to turn up in the audience, clap, do what they say. You know, like this, like this, I'm talking, do what I say. And anyone who opposes it or don't like it, they just want to be able to make, basically remove them from the building. That is a horrible humanity. And it's not just the fact that you don't want people to have a debate or a student philosophical argument or s discussion. It's the fact that, you know, they don't even want to speak or entertain about it, even when they're wrong many times. And, but what they do want people to do is like them. You're supposed to, why would you like someone? You like someone because they understand you. You like someone because they um, not just agree with you, but can debate it or talk about it. It's almost like on Star Trek when they've got, um, you know, Picard in the Nexus when everything is going right for him. And I think that's what's happened to these people. When, when you've got one company or one business and you've got a workforce, fair enough. But they sack people when they don't do exactly what they want. So you've got to get a workforce who obey, obey, obey. Then they're buying up more companies and they, oh, this is all right. This, this is all right. We've got all these, we've got all these companies and corporate entities now and everyone's obeying us and obedient. And look, they're all making widgets all day and they do exactly as they're told. And if they don't, they're sacked. And this is perfect. It's running like clockwork, but that's not human. That's not human beings, that's not humanity, that's not socialisation, that's not walking around a, a, a dance or a gala and speaking to strange people, different people. You got, you know, Neil Mohan complaining though when I accept him Buddhists, when I accept him Islams, when I accept him all different religions, right? When you do accept them, but then... He's, he's accepting them if they wear the McDonald's uniform, if they wear the Google uniform, if they wear the Subway uniform. Oh, forget the religions now. We accept our religions as we forget them. That's old, that's historic. It's Bill Gates, you know, forget Indian culture, forget Indian history. We're getting knocking the androids and robots out now. They're tricking them. They're, sti they're robbing them of their culture and heritage and language in order to absorb them into the corporate machine. But they claim that they're all welcoming in order to do that. But they're not all welcoming. In fact, you might as well paint yourself black. If you, if you painted yourself black and they removed your YouTube channel, then you could take them to court. But if you upload a video that there's nothing wrong with it and they say, oh, there's something wrong with it when there actually isn't, they don't want to talk to you. You know, you, you'd be better painting yourself black because then you've got more rights. If you paint yourself black, um, you can sue them for anything on the internet. Oh, you're, you're being racist against my channel, you know? But if, um, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your video at all, all they have to do is just call it, you know, something wrong with this, something wrong with this, so they take it down. But they don't even want to talk to you. Why pretend? Why be YouTube? Why pretend to, oh, I love all people of all cultures, right? I'm great. Flock round. Flock round Neil Mohan. We're, you know, like, kneel. Kneel. Worship the sun. You know, hooray. Applause. You know, but if you don't agree with him, then you're out. You know, so effectively... There's a new form of racism coming from Google. There's a new form of racism coming from Trudeau in Canada. There's a new form of racism coming from um, Google and Facebook, which is the racism of any human that doesn't agree with them, any human that wants to question or challenge them. You know? And the whole basis of accepting people for the skin colour, the whole basis of accepting people for the age or ethnicity is the fact they're different. 
So you're different when you don't agree with Google. You're different when you question Google. But they don't want that. They don't want you around. So they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites because they actually hate people who disagree with them. They hate people who actually want an answer from them. You know, oh, actually, I didn't think that what you said was right. Oh, we're, we're right about everything. We can't be wrong. Well, evidently not. Evidently not when I complain through Twitter to them about a video and then eventually, oh, yeah, actually, we made a mistake. There is no such, um, there is no such content in that video. It's our fault. Amazing. Why didn't you do that when I put the first appeal in? It can't have been that difficult to find out because they probably didn't look. There's probably not, nobody even looking at the appeals. So they're actually sending complaints out that aren't valid. They're actually fraudulent complaints. It's a complaint about something that doesn't exist. So they're lying and they're doing it on a massive scale. And who's going to take them to court? And this is what the Jimmy Dore show is talking about. This is what the Jimmy Dore show is talking about. Now, Google are doing things illegal. Where are all the solicitors who are meant to be volunteering to stand up for them? Um, for, for us, to stand up to them from us, you know?